In the toil of thinking, in the serenity of books, in the messages of prophets, the songs of poets, and the wisdom of interpreters, in discoveries of continents of truth whose margins we may see. We delight in free minds and in their thinking, in the majesty of moral order, in the faith that right will triumph, in the courage given us when we ally ourselves to truth in any form. In the privilege of being co-workers in good causes, we celebrate the unseen goals we share and serve. Let us build a world safe from war and oppression, free and satisfying, one that ultimately furnishes answers for us all. Good afternoon, and please be seated. Graduates, friends, and family, good afternoon and welcome. I am Gary Hepburn, Dean of the G. Raymond Chang School of Continuing Education. Before we begin, I would like to acknowledge the land on which we are celebrating today. Toronto is in the dish with one spoon territory. The treaty, or sorry, the dish with one spoon is a treaty between the Anishinaabe, Mississaugas, and Haudenosaunee that bound them to share the territory and protect the land. Subsequent Indigenous nations and peoples, Europeans, and all newcomers have been invited into this treaty in the spirit of peace, friendship, and respect. On behalf of the Chang School, and the Faculty of Arts, I would like to welcome each of you to the Spring Convocation. After the challenges of the past two years, I think I speak for all of us when I say that it is nice to be able to celebrate the occasion together. To the graduates, both in attendance and watching virtually, I would like to express my heartfelt congratulations. It is not every day in life that we accomplish a significant milestone. I encourage you to take some time to celebrate your achievement. To the family and friends here today, I would like to take the opportunity to thank you for supporting the graduates. More than you may know, your well wishes and encouragement have helped move them closer to achieving their learning goals. In today's workforce, Continuous learning is more important than ever before. Employers seek candidates that demonstrate a commitment to regularly enhancing their skills and competencies. Another major benefit of continuous learning is that it helps us enrich our perspectives and appreciation for others, which manifests itself in empathy. As you move forward, I encourage you to continue practicing the values that you have learned at Toronto Metropolitan University, such as being champions for equity and inclusion. Together, I believe that we can foster a society that places equal value in each individual. To begin this very special day, I now introduce you to the Chancellor of Toronto Metropolitan University, Janice Fukakusa. Graduates, I am very proud and honoured to speak to you today. This is a time of well-deserved celebration for all. We all share our pride in your success with everyone whose love and support has played a part in bringing you here today. Now, usually at this stage in my remarks at Convocation, I typically share a few pieces of advice with the graduating class. But after two years of the pandemic, I think it's you, the graduates, that should be sharing these pieces of advice. 
Graduands, you went through a remarkable experience. You endured and came through it, achieving your ultimate objective. You succeeded by facing and overcoming unforeseen barriers. I hope you share your experience with others and be proud of what you've achieved. In fact, be proud of the impact that you have in ev everything you do in the months and years going forward and take the time to reflect on your achievements. That builds the confidence that is essential to overcome the inevitable challenges in the years ahead. And when you look back at your university experience, I encourage you to remember what you learned about yourself. That resilience gives you the means to learn from your experiences and determination will keep you focused on your dreams. After all, all of you have proven that you have the talent to succeed. On this special day of celebration, let me close by offering my congratulations and best wishes on the journey. Thank you. Thank you, Chancellor Fukukusa. Now, please welcome the university's president and vice chancellor, Mohamed Lasheni. Thank you. Welcome to our graduates, family and friends, colleagues from across the university community and beyond. Class of 2022, this is an important day for you and you have our warmest congratulations. You graduate at a milestone moment in history. Despite the challenges brought on by the pandemic, you remain committed to your studies, kept connected to your classes, and served your community in more ways than I can describe. A milestone also, because graduating, your graduating year will be forever linked to an hour, historical name change. What has not changed from the moment you choose to study here to the moment you cross the stage into your award are the values that define our university. And when you return as alumni, you will always be at home. Class of 2022, the first graduating class of Toronto Metropolitan University, you helped shape this place. Now, both you and the university look ahead to a new chapter and a bright future. A future of promise and optimism, better prepared than ever to meet the challenges and opportunities ahead. It is your time. You have what the world is looking for, talent, energy, and new ideas. Your years here have prepared you for this moment. We are so very glad that you chose this university, that you immerse yourself in our university community. I hope you are feeling grateful for each other, for the good friends who shared your university experience and are now friends for life. Which brings us full circle. While we may find success as individuals, as a society, we depend on each other. We need loved ones, and you have many attending with you today, colleagues and community. In French, you know, we never say goodbye. Instead, we say au revoir, which literally means until we see you again. Enjoy your very special day and stay close to your alma mater. For together, we will shape the future. Thank you very much, and I invite you now to please enjoy a short video. Today marks a momentous moment in the story of your life. 
Just a few years ago, you began a new chapter. For some, that meant moving to a new city. For many, that meant discovering new perspectives. And for all, that meant opening your mind to new possibilities. Along the way, you were met with challenges unfamiliar to those who came before you and to those who follow. You embraced the responsibility of learning and unlearning, inspired by the people and places that played a part. Together, we evolved. While this chapter comes to a close, your story continues. Tomorrow, you'll remember this moment, not for who you were, but for who you have become. Today, we'll celebrate the diversity of your experience, your commitment to shaping a better future, and your part in our story. As the first graduating class of Toronto Metropolitan University. I now welcome to the podium the Honorable Justice Michael Tulak to introduce today's honorary degree recipient. <clears throat> Chancellor Fukakuza, President Lakemi, Provost Simpson, deans, esteemed colleagues, and representatives who join us on stage members of the graduating class, family, members, and friends, honored guests. It is my great privilege to deliver the citation for Chief Justice George Straffy, up in whom Toronto Metropolitan University is conferring the degree of Doctor of Laws on his causa, our highest award. George Straffy has been Chief Justice of Ontario as well as Ontario's Courts of Appeal since 2014. Shortly after his appointment to the Court of Appeal in 2013 and following his tenure on the Superior Court of Justice where he was first appointed in 2007. Chief Justice Strathy is a double alumnus of the University of Toronto with a master's degree in international relations and a bachelor of laws degree from the Faculty of Law, where he was the Dean's Gold Medal winner. George Straffy has been a, a transformational Chief Justice, and his impact on the administration of justice in Ontario and Canada will be felt for generations. He leads by example. Chief Justice Straffy is a strong advocate for increased diversity in the legal profession, modernization of the courts, and the elimination of stigma in relation to mental health. Under his leadership, the judiciary in Ontario is more diverse and inclusive than any in any other time in the history of Canada or in any other jurisdiction in Canada. He has not only advocated for diversity at all levels of the legal profession, but he has also created forums and platforms where lawyers from diverse communities can voice their opinions and how we collectively can make the justice system more representative and more accessible to the communities that we serve. Part of the motivation for modernizing the courts has a personal connection. It stems from a tragic story in Justice Strathy's history, family history. Let's go back to the year 1896 in Barrie, Ontario. His great-grandfather, Jack Straffy, answered the door of his home in what is now Barrie's East End to an upset man desperately in search of his wife and children. There was an altercation. Jack Straffy was shot in the heart and died. The killer immediately turned himself into the sheriff. Chief Justice Strathy has studied the subsequent trial, 
which was widely publicized at the time. And more than 125 years later, he is struck by the fairness of the 19th century justice system and the trial that led to the conviction of his ancestor's killer. In the course of a year, the killer of his great-grandfather had a three-day trial including 20 witnesses, an appeal, and a second trial. Chief Justice Straffi has said, it would be extraordinary to see a modern homicide case resolved within a year. The experience of his deep dive into the trial has inspired, in part, his work to bring efficiency, greater access, and more innovation to the delivery of justice, services, and legal education in Ontario. To that end, he has been a friend and supporter of the Lincoln Alexander School of Law and the law practice program here at the Toronto Metropolitan University. He has called for a radical rethink of the justice system to look for a fairer, more efficient, and cost-efficient process that, re that respects and promotes the rights and freedoms of all Canadians. And he has spoken about the need to embrace more technology in the courts. He notes how jurors are often puzzled by the court's reliance on paper and how the system has been slow to embrace efficiencies such as remote communication. I've always said that Chief Justice Strathy serves as an inspiration to anyone committed to a more equitable justice system and a more equitable society. Chief Justice Strathy, for your professional achievements and your commitment to justice, as well as to modernizing the justice system and to accessible and inclusive legal education. We celebrate and honor you today. I would now like to call Chancellor Fukakuza, President Lakemi, and Chief Justice Strathy to the podium for the conferring of the degree. Toronto Metropolitan University, by virtue of the authority granted by the Province of Ontario under the University Act, has awarded the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa with all the rights and privileges attended thereon to George Strathy. Chancellor Fuka, Fukakuza, President Rashami, distinguished guests, graduates, proud families and friends. For two long years, we have had to, to suppress celebrations like this. What a great pleasure it is to emerge from isolation and to join you and your families and friends to celebrate what you and what they have accomplished. I say you and they because your accomplishments are their accomplishments and because we know that we cannot fully participate in life without the nurture and support of family and friends. And what a great privilege it is for me to share this stage with you and to share with you the great honor of receiving a degree from Toronto Metropolitan University, Canada's most vibrant and most innovative academic institution. Since my appointment as Chief Justice of Ontario eight years ago, I've been inspired by this great institution of learning 
which has, quite frankly, welcomed me into its fold through the generosity of President Lashamy, Dean of Law Donna Young, and my colleague on the Court of Appeal for Ontario, from whom you've just heard, Justice Michael Tulloch, a huge supporter of this institution and himself the recipient of an honorary degree. As a lawyer and as a judge, my involvement has primarily been with the Law Practice Program and with the Lincoln Alexander School of Law, both striking examples of the university's diversity, innovation, and creativity, and both of which have promoted creative pedagogy and the effective use of technology in learning, a capacity that has been most striking during the pandemic. In the few minutes remaining before this party really gets underway, I want to tell you a very short story, read a very short poem, and leave you with a short message. As I am sure you know, Nelson Mandela, the former president of South Africa, was imprisoned by the racist South African regime for 27 years for his outspoken opposition to apartheid. For 18 of those years, he was confined along with other political prisoners in a jail located on Robben Island off the coast of South Africa. To inspire himself and his fellow prisoners, he frequently recited a poem written in 1875 by the poet William Ernest Henley. The poem was later called Invictus, meaning unconquerable or undefeated. It's a short poem, and I hope you'll permit me to read it. It goes like this. Out of the night that covers me, black as the pit from pole to pole, I thank whatever gods may be for my unconquerable soul. In the fell clutch of circumstance, I have not winced nor cried aloud. Under the bludgeonings of chance, my head is bloody but unbowed. Beyond this place of wrath and tears looms but the horror of the shade, and yet the menace of the years finds and shall find me unafraid. It matters not how straight the gate, how charged with punishments the scroll. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul. Imagine Mandela unjustly, unjustly jailed for nearly three decades in the most wretched of circumstances. He must have despaired that he had no, no hope of freedom. Yet like the poet, he proclaimed to himself and to his fellow prisoners that no matter how challenging the circumstances, he was the master of his own fate. He was the captain of his own soul. And Mandela's faith, his conviction, gave strength and inspiration not only to himself but to his fellow prisoners. And indeed, in spite of all the odds, a sustained international groundswell of condemnation and activism resulted in his freedom. His freedom, the de defeat of apartheid, and Mandela's ascendance to the offices, office of President of South Africa. And, and what then is the message for you, dear graduates? The poem highlights the role of individual autonomy and will in controlling one's destiny, even in the most difficult circumstances. There was likely no one who was more attuned than Mandela to the way in which oppressive structures constrain personal freedom. Yet even in the midst of the appalling personal 
and political situations he faced, he and his colleagues found a core of their soul that could not be conquered and found space to be the masters of their own face. Mandela's personal story demonstrates that we do not go through life alone and we will always need the love and support of others. And that is the message I'd like to leave with you as you stand on this threshold of the next exciting stage of your lives. My own life, like the lives, no doubt, of your parents and your own lives, have been marked by both good fortune and sometimes by misfortune. But while the winds of fortune may blow us this way and that, while we may encounter headwinds that seem to stop us in our tracks and tailwinds that make sailing through life seem very easy at times, we always have choices. And it is through the recognition and realization of those choices that we remain masters of our own fate. We can survive life's challenges and take advantage of life's opportunities if we harness our own agency, our own ability to set the course of our lives. Now, unlike Nelson Mandela, we are not imprisoned on an island. Thankfully, most of us have not encountered the circumstances he was required to overcome nor are we individual islands. We draw strength from our partners, our families, and our friends. Families, friends, and partners who are either with us in person today or with us today in our hearts and their hearts. And it is indeed with their support and the act of supporting them that we are most able to realize our individual strengths. So I leave you with these final words. Regardless of what circumstances you may face, you will always be the masters of your own fates. You will always have the ability to make choices, to be the captain of your soul, not as some lone or isolated being, but as a person who is sustained by and supportive of the family members, friends, and communities that surround you as you navigate your way through the joys and struggles of the next stages of your life. Con congratulations. Thank you. Thank you for your inspiring words, Justice Strathy. As our graduates prepare to come forward, <clears throat> I will take this opportunity to request that you hold your applause until all graduates have crossed the stage. We do, however, welcome spontaneous outbursts of joy, <clears throat> enthusiasm, and even relief from family and friends. That is all part of the celebration. I now ask to come forward and thank in advance the University Registrar, Robin Carr. Will the graduates please rise if you're able. Chancellor Fukakusa, President Lashemi, Provost Simpson, honored guests, faculty members, staff, families and friends of the graduates. I have the honor and, excuse me, honor and pleasure to present graduates from Toronto Metropolitan University's Faculty of Arts degree programs and the G. Raymond Chang School of Continuing Education certificate programs. Our graduates, including all those who are joining us for today's ceremony, as well as those unable to attend who are graduating in absentia. 
I certify that each has met the academic requirements for the awards that they are about to receive and that each has been duly approved by the University Senate. My congratulations to each of you. Please be seated. Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present today's candidates. Certificate, Landscape Design, Kara Matheson. <laughs> Bachelor of Health Administration, Health Administration. <laughs> Yan Wang, with distinction. Bachelor of Arts, Honors, Criminology. Zarif Alam. Ashley Almeida. Joanna Anandashankar. Brooke Andrews. Brianna Belmontes, with distinction. Marcus Berment Saw, with distinction. Nikki Berthelot. Saloni Bardwaj. Natalie Bulzan. Julia Caputo, with distinction. Chelsea Kawayan. Jada Kumbo. Haley Davis. <laughs> Natalie Di Maria. Tial Douglas. Ahilraj Eswaran, with distinction. Faison Fariz, with distinction. Michael Ferrante, with distinction. Yasmin Fisher. <laughs> Nicolina Galoro, with distinction. Annie Garabedian, with distinction. Brooklyn Gamil. Danielle Gravel, with distinction. Faye Heaped, with distinction. Shireen Haralal Ramsamer. Shalina Ibrahim. Megan Jesso, with distinction. Fabian Joffrey. George Karamanakos. Maria Castain. Jakirshan Kaviswaran, with distinction. Savannah Landry, with distinction. Megan Lee, with distinction. Kate Lowry, with distinction. Priya Maharaj. Madison Malfara. 
Kayla Mastro de Casa. Adila Mohammed. Arshpreet Mukher. Zahid Nakuda, with distinction. Sandra Nashed, with distinction. Andre Nguyen, with distinction. Victor Victoria Pericholo. Megan Pui, with distinction. Ali Kassim. Roman Katsi, with distinction. Maria Beatrice Quinto, with distinction. Daniela Ramos Simpson. Kathleen Ryan. Anita Thevantaran. Chanel Thomas. Natalie Thompson. Jessica Vora. Lauren Wallace. Hibo Warsami, with distinction. Jessica Yellowless. Bachelor of Arts, Honors, Criminology and Politics and Governance. Antonia Solmito, with distinction. Bachelor of Arts, Honors, Environment and Urban Sustainability. Courtney Atkinson, with distinction. Logan Brown Da Silva. Unmol Burmi. Stephanie Kaspers. Leah Delongi. Alex Dennison. Simran Dillon with distinction. David Dixon. Connor Drennan. Chirag Gina. Ariana Glover with distinction. Ariana Glover is being congratulated on stage by their mother, Angela Glover, from the School of Journalism. <laughs> Nagham Gindi. Uzma Islam. Methan Jayachandran. <laughs> Bailey Jung, with distinction. <laughs> Rochelle Kim. <laughs> Michelle Kortath. Ryan Kroon. Marwa Kubti. Madison Lalandi, with distinction. Emily Lemke, with distinction. Mary McCusker, with distinction. Shayel Melnichuk, with distinction. Joseph Natividad. Michaela Pagoto, with distinction. Jacob Palauta, with distinction. Ava Parker. May Ling Patterson, with distinction. Christopher Randall, with distinction. Krista Rodriguez. Hamisha Sarafian, with distinction. 
Sonia Stairs, with distinction. Yahira Tobar. Melanie Hoy Man Yu, with distinction. Bachelor of Arts Honors, Language and Intercultural Relations. Siobhan Alexis. Naomi Allen. Maheen Arshad, with distinction. Brandon Nixon Charlemont. <laughs> Dina Govostas, with distinction. Nargis Kadura. Camille Lejarm, with distinction. Catherine Liotti. Meet Mangsat, with distinction. Kai Morin Jones, with distinction. Andrea Rosas Martinez. Annie Salkai, with distinction. Samantha Tremblay. Royan Williams. <laughs> Bachelor of Arts, Honors, Politics and Governance. Hena Ahmed. Nial Ansari. Carolina Anton Paramanayagam. Bakhtuar Bajwa. Tia Balliot. Dilara Bektas, with distinction. Natia Darishvili. Taylor Deasley, with distinction. Michael Del Rosario. Kira Lee Dominelli, with distinction. Rami El Lababidi. Laura El Masri. Hannah Ertel, with distinction. Emery Firth Massey, with distinction. <laughs> Jacob Fox, with distinction. <laughs> Jaskirin Gill. Edward Gluck. Marco Gortana. Leah Helena Hoffminter. Jacob Hull. Inez Ishmael. Tatiana Johnson. Lazar Jovkovic. Olivia Karp. Justina Kaywal, with distinction. Malika Fatima Kimji. Maya Leatham, with distinction. Colin Lewis, with distinction. Salina Michael. Allianz Nugit. Desmond Owusu Wakin. Daniel Ramos. Yashad Ramsaha, with distinction. Brianna Reed Clark. Luke Ryder. Liam Ruddy. Ali Salih. 
Jovelli Santos Herrera with distinction. Rochelle Shepard Peterson. Arshdeep Srao with distinction. Farishta Sultan Ali. Nardos Tedros with distinction. Victoria Voos with distinction. Jordan Wedderburn. Certificate in Public Administration and Governance, Level 1. Charles McGregor. Advanced Certificate, Public Administration and Governance, Level 2. Maitan Nagaraja. Trevor Speechley. Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present candidates for the graduate degrees in the Faculty of Arts. Bachelor of Arts Honors, Public Administration and Government. Rajiv Arulanathan. Janira Balakuma. Olga Bobko. O.J. Ellis. J. David Finch, with distinction. Steven Aber. Roberto Hernandez Orellana, with distinction. Alana Maharaj, with distinction. Daniel Nowaselski, with distinction. Monique Rooms Napier. Monique is also receiving an advanced certificate in public administration and government level two. Ashley Smith with distinction. Graham Taylor with distinction. Brittany Vivier. Colleen Waseji Migwans. Master of Arts, Criminology and Social Justice, Kay Tracy. Master of Arts, Public Policy and Administration, Holly Foran. Jenny Bikong G. Ronak Norfaza. Madam Chancellor, I have the honor to present candidates for the certificates in the G. Raymond Chang School of Continuing Education. Doctor of Philosophy, Policy Studies, Patience Adamu. Chang. <laughs> Peter Hastrup. Certificate Applied Digital Geography and GIS, Carolyn Nettleton. Certificate Crime Analytics, Kirisi Pimentel Lucas. Certificate in Criminal Justice and Criminology, Corey Andre. Taylor Rogers. Certificate in Mental Health and Addictions. Maha Nuki. 
Julie Ostrowski. Certificate in Proficiency in French, Adrian Reyes. Certificate in Proficiency in Spanish, Julian Luriet. Certificate in Psychology, Guillermo Cordero. Nena Kriebecker. Certificate in Public Administration and Leadership. Zainab Ali. Ann Taylor Scott. Certificate in Accounting Finance. Howard Chow. Jonalyn Venerea. Wan Feng Zhu. Certificate in Business Decision Analysis. Ji Lang. Certificate in Business Management. Chantelle Gaspard. Michael Romita. Jose Salazar Molina. Certificate Entrepreneurship and Small Business, Tamir Babaker. Certificate in Foundations of International Management, Uraola Akinola. No more, no more, no more. Certificate in Health Informatics, Mohammed Alad Hussein. Atia Kershi. Mahmoudul Manan. Deepika Ravintaran. Narthanan Sri Murugathasan. Certificate in Health Services Management, Kiran Barreto. Nermeen Hani Kotbi Al Sawi. Tanzim Saleha. Mary Thorne. Certificate in Health Studies. Cecilia Amokohene. Andrea Baird. Nabila Khan. Mahmoud Rahim. Certificate in Human Resources Management. Hira Asim. Charlene Biggerstaff. Yeah! Haley LaForest. Amanda McIsaac. Zaleka Najmi. Praveen Prabaharan. Sinita Simon Samuel. Ivan Taruno Morales. Warren Ward. Gaynell Waro. Certificate in Information Systems Management. Ryle Penitsitos. Certificate in Leadership in Organizations. Michael Carmichael. Certificate in Privacy Access and Information Management, David Ernest Ceballos. Certificate in Retail Management, Mark Guaya. Certificate in Strategic Marketing, Meredith Boda. Anne Marie Tarrant. Certificate in Business Communication, Grant Patton. Marianne Savendra. Certificate in Design Management. Noran Risk. Certificate in Facility and Property Management. Jessica Foray. Din So. Certificate in Media Writing Fundamentals. Mark Ferguson. Certificate in Photography Studies. Shu Hong Lu. 
Certificate in Public Relations, Elizabeth Brown. Ismat Rahman. Yara Shazeda. Ravjeet Singh. Certificate in Publishing, Veronica Anis. Moira Saunders. Certificate in Indigenous Knowledges and Experiences, Harrison Ho Tom. Certificate in Canadian Social Work Practice, Israt Ahmed. And Tara Gupta. Certificate in Community Engagement, Leadership and Development, Alicia Gordon Smith. Janatul Islam. Lauren Nicholson. Melissa Piccioni. Rachel Seeley. Certificate in Food Security. Jasmine Hussein. Larissa Jerome. Marine Lam Cam Yui. Lindsay Ma. Johanna Ogba Michael. <laughs> Melissa Scalzo. Lauren Wong. Certificate in Occupational Health and Safety. Jerry Garcia Morado. Syed Hasnain. Kiran Kershi. Mamawa Lajante. Leanne Lonert. Danielle Peltier. Richard Rodrigo Recto. Farhan Salim. Kayinde Sonde. Esbieta Struzik. Certificate Occupational Health and Safety Leadership, Michael Corpez. Certificate in Advanced Safety Management, Tiffany Lesko. Certificate in Architecture, Katarina Kuzmenko. Miriam Otara. Certificate Advanced Architecture, Elham Moradi. Certificate Indigenous Knowledges and Experiences, Caitlin Wilcox. Certificate Data Analytics, Big Data and Predictive Analytics, Inas Ali. Bushra Bashir. Marina Goldberg. Lassen Jean Marcoffi Coco. A Maduhu Sudan. Nasim Kurabar. Katie Schilling. Savita Saharawat. Ahmed Munib Sheikh. Asish Solapur. Josa Soto. David Yang. Certificate in Emergency Management, Threat and Response Planning. Catherine Longevin. Rosaline Torreira. Certificate in Internationally Educated Engineers Qualification Bridging Program, Ahmed Al Halbuni. Siamek Garmrudi. Ibrahim Hama Amin. 
Mofid Nasta. Christine Marielle Realubin. Certificate Landscape Design for Climate Resilience. Sadaf Abassi. Masa Marishi Zeda. Certificate in Practical Data Science and Machine Learning. Omar El Basuni. Certificate in Project Management. Majd Afaz. Syed Mehdi Agi. Sam Biden. Chelsea Chandra Kantan. Sergia Karina Freire. Lauren Gonsalves. Crystal Manias. Leanne Rambali. Despina Ritsakis. Austin Wonche. Certificate in Project Management for Technical Professionals. Osama Bamasu. Mehmet Bozbeyoglu. Moon Moon Chatterjee. Habib Ullah Maimon. Certificate in Computer Programming Applications. Laura Duggan. Eric Liu. Subramanya Bharathi Pandiala. Surin Salvanayigam. Certificate in Financial Mathematics, Modeling, and Predictive Analytics. Shashank Arevkar. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of today's graduates. Hello Toronto Met grads, I'm Jen McMillan, Vice Provost Students and I'm so excited to share this moment with you. After years of hard work and great memories, you finally made it to the finish line. Congratulations on this huge accomplishment. I know you have a lot of family and friends in your corners too. People who supported you when you needed it most and who cheered you on at every milestone. Whether they are near or far, they are celebrating you today and no doubt incredibly proud of your achievements. I hope you feel that your degree not only represents what you learned in the classroom, but how you made the most of your time here. You worked hard, tackling assignments, studying for exams and balancing jobs, but also played hard, joining clubs, making athletics history, and becoming student leaders. While some of you might have grown up close by, many of you spent hours on a plane to get here. And that's the beauty of this place. We're a community made up of people from all around the world who found a second home at TMU. So take all of your experiences, your successes and learnings, and dive into every opportunity that lies ahead. Grow the network of friends you've built here and help one another thrive in new spaces around the world. I hope you keep getting involved, keep speaking up, and keep living out loud because this world needs you just as you are. Do you hear me? It needs you, and I'm so happy we could help you on your way. Congratulations again. When I moved here to go to university, I was, you know, this kid in this big, intimidating city, and this place just felt like home to me. And I knew immediately, having just come from Jamaica, that that was the place for me. I spent three years here. These are still the best three years of my life. 
You know, one of the fondest memories that I had was being here at 1, 2 in the morning. You know, you're leaving at around 3 a.m., but it didn't matter because you were doing what you loved. My fondest memory at the university was the day I graduated. Dr. G. Raymond Chang, our previous chancellor, was handing it off to me. I remember when I got up to that stage, I whispered over to him, I'm Jamaican as well. I'm so proud to have you as my chancellor. And we giggled. Interaction with meeting students from all over the world interaction with my instructors of the day. My fondest memory was getting a husband. The warmth, the camaraderie, the buildings were so friendly. During my eight years as president of the university, I officiated at well over 50 convocations. My fondest memory really was to see the students coming across the stage to see their families excited with them, and to see so many of the students who are graduating be the first in their family to get a degree. And it's all true. <laughs> yes, thank you. It's not fluff. It is now my pleasure to invite Pam Sujiman, Dean of the Faculty of Arts, to present our first academic medalist of the day. I am very pleased to announce that criminology graduate Julia Caputo is the recipient of the university's gold medal for the Faculty of Arts. Julia has achieved outstanding grades across all her undergraduate courses. Her CP, CGPA, cumulative grade point average, is an incredible 4.13. And she has been on the Dean's List every single year of her studies. In 2021, Julia earned first place in the case law competition of the Toronto Metropolitan University Law Network. And Julia has achieved the academic success while at this academic success while at the same time making valuable contributions to the university through awareness raising and participation in community engaged scholarly research and creative projects on equity and anti-racism, particularly anti-black and anti-indigenous racism. And beyond the walls of the academy, Julia has furthermore engaged in voluntary activities focused on supporting racialized children and youth who are in precarious situations. I invite Julia and President Blashmi forward for the presentation of this award. I am now thrilled to announce that Mental Health and Addiction Certificate graduate Maha Naki is the university's gold medal recipient for the Chang School of Continuing Education. Maha is an exceptional role model. Through acts of kindness, Maha demonstrates a firm commitment to improving the lives of others. During her studies, Maha was well regarded, regarded for organizing peer study groups and offering note-taking support for those with academic accommodations. As a coordinator with Unionville Community Center for Seniors, she goes above and beyond to develop programs and services that support client well-being. Maha also volunteers her time with numerous community organizations, including the Citizens Foundation and Regent Park Community Food Center. Without a doubt, Maha's graciousness left a lasting mark on both the TMU and larger community. I invite Maha and President Lachemi to come forward for the presentation of this award.
Please welcome Provost and Vice President Academic Jennifer Simpson. Hi, it's really great to be here. I can't think of a better way to, to spend an afternoon in such a celebration and to see all of you who are so excited about your achievements. My name's Jennifer Simpson. I'm the Provost and Vice President Academic, and this is also my first graduation. I got here in July 2021, and I'm so glad to be here with all of you. You have arrived at this day, at this celebration, at this accomplishment. Once again, congratulations. As we bring today's convocation ceremony to a close, it's an opportunity to reflect on the sacrifices and successes that have led to this moment. We can consider the challenges that each of you have overcome. Endless study sessions and all-nighters dedicated to finishing projects and to getting through tough exams. Extracurricular activities to balance with a demanding academic schedule. And all of this you did within a global pandemic that pushed and challenged you in ways none of us could imagine. You also gained some things along the way. Cherished memories at varsity games, campus events, to reminisce about with lifelong friends. And hopefully an appetite for learning to fuel your, your growth in the years ahead. To accomplish these things, you had to show up every day you persevered, you asked tough questions, you challenged the status quo, and you triumphed. For all of these reasons, this is a day of well-deserved celebration for you and your families. In many ways, you are all standing at the beginning of your own next chapter. It's likely that you'll have moments of excitement, frustration, and doubt sometimes going ahead. And more than 30 years ago, I can remember my own moments of uh, more self-doubt than frustration, this particular story. And it was about a year after I had finished my undergraduate degree, and I had done an internship, but was thinking about what's next. And I didn't know. And time was approaching that my internship would end. I was kind of panicking, what am I going to do? And this thought just crossed my mind that, you know what, I'm going to reach out to a professor. And I hadn't done that for the whole year. And I was a little nervous, is this person going to remember me? What's he going to think? And I reached out, and the first thing that happened was he was so glad to, to hear from me and to see me, and I was just relieved. You know, okay, it's good. I reached out and he's excited. And then I'll always remember what he told me. He said, whenever possible, follow your heart. And it was such a brief set of words, but they were so meaningful, and they were what I needed to hear. And we all hope that each of you trust yourself and your own passions that you follow your heart. We also hope that you rely on support, that you reach out to whoever it is who might offer support in those moments. We want to hear from you. You can bring us, faculty, staff, your friends, your questions and your successes. Here at TMU, we want to hear from you. We hope you continue to ask questions, to keep learning, and to stay open. I'll also take a minute to say a special thank you to family members and friends who have helped you along the way. As we heard from Chief Justice Strathy, it's so important to rely on those places of support that we have. So thank you to all the friends and family who made all of this possible. You've all also contributed so much to the graduate success. But also, this is your day, graduates, so we wish you good luck and congratulations. We want you to remember one really important thing, that by completing your journey here, you will always be part of the Toronto Metropolitan University family, an ever-growing group of passionate people doing remarkable work in every corner of the world. Good luck with all of your future endeavors. We look forward to what each of you will contribute to our shared future. Thanks very much. Thank you, Provost Simpson. I would like to thank all of the volunteers and faculty here today. 
who help us make this ceremony a wonderful experience for all. Graduates and guests, once again, congratulations from everyone at the university. I hope you continue to enjoy this very special day. But first, if you can rise and join Catherine Rowan from the Office of the Dean in the Faculty of Arts in the singing of our national anthem. Following the anthem, please remain standing until all of the graduates have left the arena. Thank you for celebrating with us today. <laughs> 